Hello everyone and welcome to Kerbal Space Capital Ship Design. In my live stream yesterday I decided to try and design a small pocket carrier, something capable of carrying 12 craft of this sort. This is the craft that it's meant to carry. There's a skiff. I named it because somebody mentioned it looked like sort of a skiff in the chat during the live stream. And it's, it's a nifty little thing. It's just liquid fuel, a uh, nuclear engine in the back, lots of liquid fuel, and also four of the small jets so that I can do atmospheric work as well. It's meant to carry some science. It's actually, I don't know if I can get the camera in. It carries science uh, behind these solar panels here. So uh, it's not really big science, but it's actually got two goo containers here. Um, right there, goo container. Uh, so yeah, uh, and non-functional circular intakes there. But uh, yeah. Battery packs, RCS, so it can dock. Its docking port is actually on the belly, and we'll see why in a bit. I wanted to do a sort of flat nose design with this, and so that's why those intakes up front like that. And um, it it can't be an SSTO or anything because these jets can't get very high, but it can get around. That's for sure. And I haven't tried re-entry with it yet, but that's something that uh, I will need to test. It's got a lot of monopropellant. Uh, in this install, it's just stock parts and no added functionality, no FAR or anything like that. Um, the mods are Kerbal Engineer and the Visual Mods. Uh, so here you see monopropellant 615, so lots of monopropellant. And that was mainly because I needed to make uh, push the center mass forward with that uh, heavy nuclear engine in the back. So um, right now, we're just barely forward enough to make this work out as a plane. So, let's try and see how it works as a plane. I'm going to have uh, Jeb do it. We'll just have Jeb go in. And um, it's a little bit finicky. It doesn't go very fast. Those four jets, when you take a look at the total mass, um, we're talking about 16.68 tons, and it's got four of those little jets. It's really compact. And that's important because we have to fit a lot of them on the carrier. So here we go. Okay, so another thing you might have noticed is these two hard points. It's got one hard point here and one on the side here as well. And those are for boosters. So it can carry some boosters on the side that would fit uh, with the shape of the craft. I don't know if that would be enough to get it to orbit on its own. That's not how we're going to get these to orbit, and I'll show you that later. Uh, I did the whole thing on the live stream. We got the carrier to orbit, we got this to orbit, I'm just recreating it for you here. Now, as far as landing this is concerned, I did not have much success. So, we'll see how it goes here. It needs to use the nerve in order to take off, even though at sea level the nerve only generates 14.2 kilonewtons. But we can turn the nerve off eventually. Come on, little guy. Uh, oh. Ah, there we go. So there it is. With the nerve on, it could probably last for about, uh, well, maybe about 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, this reading is wrong. What flight engineer is saying here, that's not correct. It cannot break the speed of sound. Not like this. I mean, I can turn off the nerve now. So even though it uh, is obviously designed to be atmospheric capable, its main job is to go around various systems and potentially explore lathe a bit because lathe you can use the air intakes and jets so it might be a lathe explorer type craft oh and uh, along with the visual mods obviously I have uh, Kerbal Constructs and all that stuff curb inside that's why we've got the extended KSC there okay here we go let's try and land this back but like I said I didn't have too much luck with this it tend to veer off to one side. I'll need to reinforce the landing gear or something. Landing gear out. Oh, 
Uh, see, it tends to veer to one side. It skids a lot. Uh, oh. Well, at least this time it didn't break into pieces, but that was one heck of a skid. Um, a skid for the skiff. Anyway, so yeah, it's sort of like that. Uh, well, anyway, let's take a look at the carrier. Okay, so this is the pocket carrier. And I call it that because it's not actually as large as some of the other carriers I've been trying to build. Um, and it, instead of having an internal hangar, the way it saves space is by having the craft perched on top and on the bottom because we're making use of the fact that we're in space. So it's got space for 12. One, two, three. Actually, I've got the skiff um, subassemblied so that I could uh, figure out the spacing of everything. Uh, the fuel lines, though, on the skiff. Don't get me started on those. So it's like that. And then I've made sure that there's space for a bunch of them. Each skiff is 99 parts, so when you actually, if you, I actually put 12 on here, the whole thing will be more than 1500 parts. So that would be quite a test. And we'll probably get to that at some point. But yeah, so it's like this. And all the, this is all rocket fuel. Uh, but at the center what we have is a hangar. So we've got a cargo ramp and a huge internal hangar space should I ever want to use all of that. So it's got that going for it. I'm not really sure why we have a ramp when this is going to be staying in space and not landing. Maybe I should retrofit it for landing somewhere maybe? That would be quite interesting. It's got a lot of fuel. You can see its internal delta V is 4000 meters per second. And right now it's just using three rhinos, but if we put engines on the bottom, uh, the downside is that we'd have to be very careful about where to put them, otherwise we would nix the... Well, if we're going to land somewhere, we're only going to be able to carry six craft, because we can't carry the skiffs on the bottom then. So yeah, that is true. But I found out that these, these little uh, Mark II fuselages are actually stackable in sort of this pyramid way. Um, maybe I can demonstrate that. So we can stack them like this. It's gotta be a way. There we go. So you, you can sort of stack them like this and make that sort of shape. So I found that interesting and so I created this shape with it. And so we've got a huge bank of battery power. We've got RTGs in the tail. The tail is sort of interesting. I have to figure out a way of smoothing out the ends of these things and I made this and that's actually hiding RCS, RTGs and some reaction wheels. So it's sort of like that. That is the design for the carrier. It is 345 parts and full of fuel it is 736 tons. So the thing is our thrust to weight ratio is not enough to get us off the ground, but it does have enough delta V. Now, my instinct was just to add uh, engines off to the side that would be drawing fuel from the body, but people in chat during the live stream wanted a complex booster, so I made a complex booster. So let's go to the VAB and talk about that. So this is what the launch looked in full. And these are the side boosters, and they wanted something complex. First of all, they wanted a hybrid motor, which means that it had to be a mix of solid and liquid. And so we have the kickback solid uh, fuel boosters. We have five of them, one in the center and four on the sides. And then for control, because these solid rocket boosters don't have gimbling, we have the vector engines, which are the highest TWR engines for this size. So... The thrust is limited on the kickbacks because we want the uh, the SRBs to run out at the same time as the vectors. That's uh, I thought that was important. I felt that was important. Uh, now I I wanted it to re-enter, and so I uh, come back down, and uh, so I have the heat shield here. But I mean, the reason I don't have the heat shield on this side, which would be more logical, is because well, I didn't have anywhere to put them. Uh, put the heat shield. There was just nowhere to fit it. Um, I tried to put a little fins here, but that didn't work out. Really, this is not recoverable in the way it is, but I, I, I gave it a chance. We've got air brakes and all, but I really need to weigh this side down. These tanks are locked, by the way, to weigh it down. 
Um, also, those get unlocked and we can use the burners. But you can see Sepatrons um, barely work. Parachutes on this side because that's the side that, uh, well, that was what I was hoping would stay on top. Obviously, it flipped around, but uh, let's let's just ignore that. Anyway, the main goal is to get into orbit. Some I insisted on fins on the carrier, so I put uh, I put the tail fins there and the little wings here to make it sort of a dolphin shape kind of thing. Um, that's about it. So that's the launch for you. And so one minute and thirty-eight point nine seconds is how long the boosters last. And that gives us thrust weight ratio of 1.37. They do not draw fuel from the carrier itself. And once the carrier gets to orbit, we expect about a thousand meters per second of delta V left over, depending on how we did the launch. So, uh, well, let's try it out. We don't need to send anybody up here. We've got a drone core there. So, uh, well, I guess it'll be interesting. This is I've already launched this in the save that I'm intending to pursue in my in my uh, what you got live streams. So yeah, this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, for some reason during the live stream, this listed to one side, and I don't understand why. We'll see if it does that again. Okay, so here we go. SAS on, throttle up. It's wiggling. Keep it steady. Um, I know some. Yeah, there there are some structural tanks that I used to fill in area on the carrier, and that's why we're missing some uh, some fuel there. I didn't want to run fuel lines to those tanks, it would have been tedious. And refueling the carrier would be difficult in that situation. Right now it's really easy to refuel the carrier because the tanks are all visible on the outside, so that's nice. Okay, let's go. So right now this is 1,300 tons. I mean certainly not the heaviest thing anybody's ever lifted in Curl Space Program. This is quite light by, by when it comes to the sizes of really heavy things. Yeah, I mean see we're listening to one side and I don't know why. Try and correct that a bit. Uh, I don't want to do anything too dangerous with this. Sure, it worked once, but that doesn't mean it's going to work a second time. Especially if I do something silly with it. But you can see, uh, I'm I'm trying to go on one side of the 90 degree marker, and the prograde vector tends to want to go on the other side for some reason. It's like we have a thrust imbalance, but we don't. The fuel is draining exactly as you'd expect. I think we don't have a trunk thrust imbalance. It'd be weird. It'd be really weird. Somebody suggested that there was a difference in the fairings on top of the boosters, but I really can't see it. This is intentionally a steep ascent, by the way. I would like to separate the boosters in the thinnest atmosphere possible. Passing through the speed of sound, transonic. Oh, and the liquid fuel looks like it's draining faster than the solid fuel, but it's not. That's because all of the vector engines are draining from this tank first. So that's a little bit deceptive. Jeb is delighted. Seven more seconds on the boosters. This is actually max Q here. Well, I mean, it is probably past max Q already. Okay, separation of boosters. Alright, they're off, just barely. 
I don't know about recovery, but they're off. And getting the boosters off is half the battle. It wasn't as wiggly as it was during the on-stream launch. And you can see we have a huge surplus of Delta V. And that's because I didn't really need boosters like that. I could have done with just uh, strap-on engines taking fuel from this. With maybe a little bit of fuel of their own. Incidentally, you'll note that the center engine draws fuel from the outer ones, but the outer ones don't draw from the center, so the outer ones will, will extinguish first. I'm rolling to get this upright. We sort of launched upside down. We are now right side up. No problem with the Rhino engines on. But it'd be really hard to roll once those two go out and we have to use the reaction wheel control. That's no good. That makes it a lot harder. Or the RCS for that matter. We do have an RCS system, but it's not great. Okay, now on the center engine only. You can see orbit is shaping up nicely. Not much of a struggle to get this up, actually. Its dry mass, I mean, well, its mass in orbit will be almost 300 tons. But that's still with some fuel, not quite the dry mass. So this can easily, like, transfer to Joule or something, and then get into orbit around Joule. With its full fuel load, 4,000 meters per second, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, of course, I was thinking about Lathe as a possible location where the skiffs would be very useful. Alright, 100 by 95.7. Uh, we have two lighting options right now. There's, there's the green lighting option for uh, when everything is alright. And interestingly, even though I put the lights on the top, it glows the ports and the little... Uh, accessories if you will on the on the bottom which is nice I didn't expect that at all I, I had totally forgotten to put lights for the bottom because the docking ports at the bottom were somewhat of an afterthought but we can also do red so red is an option as well so dual lighting options for this vessel uh, if we turn them both on at the same time it's yellow so you can have a yellow alert as well Okay, so that is interesting. Uh, let me show you how I launched the skiffs. So since I had already developed a booster, I decided to adapt the booster. And I didn't mean for some of these struts to be hanging loose here. Let me just take those off. Um, so adapt the booster with these great big fins. The reason we have these big fins is because at the top we have all these aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, so the and so there's a second stage. Just has a rhino there. But this is basically identical, except no, none of the recovery stuff, no parachutes, none of the air brakes, or... Uh, there are burner thrusters, but uh, obviously not the heat shield on top. So all of that removed, and so this is just a disposable booster now with really big fins on the bottom. And uh, Rhino stage, and that will get it to orbit. Actually, the Rhino stage on the live stream got all the way to the rendezvous, and the skiffs just have to uh, cover about 500 meters to get to the carrier. But um, I'll show you what that looked like after we do this. We'll do a test launch and then I'll jump to the actual save that was for the live stream that will show you the situation as it really is uh, for what I'm going to be doing going forward because that save we're going to be doing other things in and uh, many other adventures and I've recruited some of the Twitch viewers as Kerbals so uh, they are involved. All right. So let us launch this and see how this works. Hopefully it'll work as well as it did during the live stream. Mm. I didn't really want Valentina and Bill inside. But heck, why not? This was not the first design for the skiff launch, by the way. The first design had them in a fairing. 
but the fairing was ugly anyway, but it wasn't structurally stable. Um, the upper portion kept detaching from the lower portion because no matter how I strutted up the fairing, uh, it was always too weak. So yeah, that's why. This uh, has the downside of exposing all of the aerodynamic surfaces of the skiffs to the airstream instead of having them in the in the fairing, but it has the upside of looking somewhat better than a really bulbous fairing. Okay, here we go. Now again, it'd be pretty easy to put these little guys on a booster individually, uh, but I wanted to get them up to orbit en masse, so a lot of them at once. Note that we have 529 parts right now, each skiff being 99 parts. So could I theoretically like make a larger booster and put 8 of them or even a full complement of 12 of them at the same time? Sure. Uh, but the part count would be quite taxing and the lag would be tremendous. So we're at 529 parts now. I am testing the, the extent of my new computer. It's, uh, its ability to deal with Kerbal and all of its parts and I think it's holding up pretty well. A uh, bit of a roll issue here. I think the aerodynamic surfaces on the little skiffs are just having some effect now. Uh, once we pass through Max-Q and get well beyond the sound barrier in reverse order, uh, that, that will help. But right now uh, we're just approaching the worst of it, not through it. I'm gonna light the engine at the same time as separation. Let's just see for that way. So there we go. Um, we are on our way. About the same separation time as with the other launch. Oh, the scatterer is having a weird effect there. The reason I picked the Rhino engine, by the way, is simply for structural integrity. After, after the fairing version failed so many times, basically at the joint right below the engine, and I was trying to use a vector for that one, I decided that going with a full-size engine would be better. I also tried a mainsail for that one too, that didn't work either. It was really the fairing joint itself. Okay, coasting to Abwaps. Now one thing I didn't do is I didn't put any lights on the skiffs. I should have put a light near their docking ports, come to think of it. By the way, some people in the Twitch chat refer to them as runabouts, so you can think of them like that as well if you'd like. But they don't really have much by way of downward facing thrusters. I could put Twitch engines on them, but then I need to put oxidizer. Right now they're just liquid fuel, so... There's no oxidizer involved. Uh, the other possibility is the Werner thrusters, which, given the fact that they have a lot of... Well, the Werner thrusters also use liquid fuel and oxidizer. No, I mean the the uh, engines that use mod propellants, whatever they're called. Um, those could be used because we have, we're have we packing a lot of mod propellants in each of the skiffs. But I'll think about that later for now. This is how I got them to orbit. And let's jump to the save that I used for the stream and I'll show you the current state of things. So here we are and uh, you can see a single skiff docked to what we dubbed the KSS Jules Verne and green lights are on and nearby there's the rest of the launch, there's a skiff launch with the other three. One of those is piloted by EDB bot, my in-stream bot and uh, that one will be making uh, the re-entry test. So we'll be doing the re-entry test with that uh, the rest will try and dock with this uh, when I get around to it. But uh, yeah, uh, Valentina and Bill are inside the carrier itself. Somnus Simplex was the Kerbal recruited from chat in order to pilot the skiff. So yeah, we've got one skiff docked here and we can do more. But for now, I'm going to leave it like this. Oh, incidentally, in this save, we've got a lot of activities going on. And if we jump to Eve, 
I have another one of my capital ships. That is, if you've never seen it before, I might as well show you it now. So this is the Onizuka, and it is a modular capital ship. Each of these modules are independent spacecraft. They docked together themselves. And so there's a front end here with the cupola. This is a drive section with uh, two nuclear engines there and some radiators. And then this is the main bridge section. As you can see, plenty of space for Kerbals. And this is the fuel section. This on the side is actually a payload. This is actually a lander. Uh, it's actually meant to be a Venus lander. I think we already undocked one and let it uh, go to the surface because some Kerbals recruited from chat wanted to go to the surface of EVE. I warned them that they would not be coming back, but they wanted to go anyway. Uh, and this is a large drive section. It has six nerves and one vector. And lots of RCS as you can see. Well, it's empty right now though. But yeah, so a five section capital ship put together in orbit. Its total mass right now is a mere 113 tons, but that's after transferring all the way to EVE. So, yep, that is another one of my designs. And we'll be doing other types of capital ships on the streams on Saturdays, I think. Alright, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.